and welcome back to my channel. Today we are in the most magical place ever. No, not Disney, we're at Universal Studios because we're going to Hogwarts today. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter consists of two parks, Universal Islands of Adventure, which contains Hogwarts Castle and Hogsmeade Village, and Universal Studios Florida, which has Diagon Alley. So our trip is going to start by taking the night bus all the way to downtown London, where we're going to find the Leaky Cauldron. And if we go just to the back of the Leaky Cauldron, there's a magic wall that we can go through. And just past that wall is the magic of Diagon Alley. In Diagon Alley, you're going to find Gringotts Bank, Weasley's Wizard Weezes Shop, and so much more. There's a lot of rides here as well, and it's just a magical place. So in order to get ready for Hogwarts, we're going to need to take some money out of Gringotts Bank. are galleons, 17 silver sickles to a galleon, and 29 canuts to a sickle. It's easy enough. Right, that should be enough for a couple of turns. Now that we have our wizarding gold, let's get on with that shopping list. Where to next? Oh, of course, Ollivanders. Look. A magic wand. This is what Harry had been looking forward to. The last shop was narrow and shabby. Peeling gold letters over the door read, Ollivanders, makers of fine wands since 382 BC. A single wand lay on a faded purple cushion in the dusty window. Welcome to Ollivanders, makers of fine wands since 382 BC. Young man, you were here for your wand, yes? Step into the light so that I may see you more clearly. Yeah. Right yeah. And what is your name? And Matan, which is your wand arm, left or right? Ah. Now you may know. Every Ollivander wand has a core of a powerful magical substance. We use unicorn hairs, phoenix tail feathers, and the heartstrings of dragons. No two Ollivander wands are the same, just as no two unicorns, dragons, or phoenixes are the same. And you will never get such good results with another wizard's wand. Now then, Matan, let's begin. A wand a vine. Fifteen and a half inches long, with a unicorn hair pull. There you are. Now, uh, do you see the red boxes rather high up on the wall there? I want you to levitate one of those boxes, make it float in the air. Simply point the wand at the box, give it a swish and a flick, and say, Wingardium Leviosa. <laughs> Reparo! No, that is definitely not your wand, young man. Not to worry, we are getting closer. Now then. A wand of reed. Fifteen inches long. The dragon heart string or here are. Now, uh, do you see the ladder? <coughs> I want you to make the ladder come to you. Simply point the wand at the ladder and say, Akio ladder. Akio ladder. <laughs> no, that's not your side. <laughs> <laughs> Those of us who study wand 
people all know the one chooses the wizard, but it is unclear why. I wonder. Now that we have our wand in perfect working order, let's treat ourselves to some Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. Fred and George's windows hit the eye like a firework display. Casual passers-by were looking back over their shoulders at the windows, and a few rather stunned-looking people actually came to a halt, transfixed. It was packed with customers. Harry could not get near the shelves. He stared around, looking up at the boxes piled to the ceiling. Here were the skeeving snack boxes that the twins had perfected during their last, unfinished year at Hogwarts. Harry noticed that the nosebleak nougat was most popular, with only one battered box left on the shelf. There were bins full of trick wands, the cheapest merely turning into rubber chickens or pairs of pants when waved, the most expensive beating the unwary user around the head and neck boxes of quills, which came in self-inking, self-checking, and smart answer varieties. Now that our pockets are a lot lighter, let's keep walking around Diagon Alley and see what else there is to discover. down this way. Let's check it out. He was quite alone, but where was he? He had no idea. All he could tell was that he was standing in the stone fireplace of what looked like a large, dimly lit wizard's shop. But nothing in here was ever likely to be on a Hogwarts school list. A glass case nearby held a withered hand on a cushion, a blood-stained pack of cards, and a staring glass eye. Evil-looking masks leered down from the walls. An assortment of human bones lay upon the counter, and rusty, 
spiked instruments hung from the ceiling. Even worse, the dark, narrow street Harry could see through the dusty shop window was definitely not Diagon Alley. The sooner he got out of here, the better. He had emerged into a dingy alleyway that seemed to be made up entirely of shops devoted to the dark arts. The one he'd just left, Borgen and Burke's, looked like the largest, but opposite was a nasty window display of shrunken heads. Okay, let's check our map and see how we can get back to Diagon Alley. Oh my, I hadn't noticed how much we spent at the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes shop. We're gonna need to take out some more money from Gringotts. Welcome to the Gringotts Money Exchange. You there, at the front. Ah. Name, please. Roslyn. <laughs> Welcome. Here at the Gringotts Money Exchange, you may exchange money currency for an official Gringotts Bank Students may also bring an owl, or a cat, or a toad. Hmm, where are we going to find that? They paid for their ice creams and crossed the street to the magical menagerie. There wasn't much room inside. Every inch of walls was hidden by cages. It was smelly and very noisy because of the occupants of these cages were all squeaking, squawking, jabbering, and hissing. There were cats of every color, a noisy cage of ravens, a basket of funny custard-colored fur balls that were humming loudly, and on the counter, a vast cage of sleek black rats which were playing some sort of skipping game using their long, bald tails. It's been such a long day of shopping. I think it's time we took a break and had some lunch. Mm, the Leaky Cauldron has a lot of good options. I think this is the place we should stop at. Harry ate breakfast each morning in the Leaky Cauldron, where he liked watching the other guests. Funny little witches from the country, up for a day's shopping, venerable-looking wizards arguing over the latest article in Transfiguration today, wild-looking warlocks, raucous dwarfs, and once what looks suspiciously like a hag who ordered a plate of raw liver from behind a thick woolen balaclava. Oh my gosh, what time is it? Our train's about to leave, we gotta rush! So now that we have the robe, the wand, and all of the necessary items, we're going on the Hogwarts Express and on our way to Hogwarts.
Do you know much about Hogsmeade? asked Hermione keenly. I've read it's the only entirely non-muggle settlement in Britain. Yeah, I think it is, said Ron in an offhand sort of way. But that's not why I want to go. I just want to get inside Honeydukes. I guess we should finally make our way up to the castle. We don't want to be late for the feast. The hall was now staring at the hat. He stared at it too. For a few seconds, there was complete silence. Then the hat twitched. A rip near the brim opened wide like a mouth, and the hat began to sing. So put me on, don't be afraid, and don't get in a flap. You're in safe hands, though I have none, for I'm a thinking cap. They marched in silence around a corner, and she stopped before a large and extremely ugly stone gargoyle. Sherbert Lemon, she said, and this was evidently a password. 
because the gargoyle sprang suddenly to life. He knew where he was being taken. This must be where Dumbledore lived. Harry looked around. One thing was certain, of all the teacher's offices Harry had visited so far this year, Dumbledore's was by far the most interesting. If he hadn't been scared out of his wits that he was about to be thrown out of school, he would have been very pleased to have a chance to look around it. This here, my friends, is the pavilion. Ridiculous to our strange. A single sting causes dizziness and levitation. Allow me to give you an example. Who would like to join me in my picture for a demonstration? Well, maybe not. The last guest floated right out the window. The teachers had to curse her down. Right, must get down to the match. Today, Harry Potter is going to show you how the game of Quidditch was meant to be played. Another year gone, Dumbledore said cheerfully. What a year it has been. Hopefully your heads are a little fuller than they were. You have the whole summer ahead to get them nice and empty before next year starts. And just like that, it's time to head back to London. They were boarding the Hogwarts Express, talking and laughing as the countryside became greener and tidier, eating Birdie Bots every flavor beans as they sped past Muggle towns, pulling off their wizard robes and putting on jackets and coats, pulling into platform nine and three quarters at King's Cross Station. Thank you.